Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Just moving the truck over to my loading location close to the apartment a box fell off the top that box with 121 on it now when I was at Home Depot buying boxes and there was a guy there delivering plants I seen the guy do something that I thought was really neat where you see these wooden planks set he had a bracket there with holes in it and as he unloaded plants and his stack moved back, he had a bar that he hooked in that side, hooked over to this side, and it stopped his cargo from tipping over and falling. I've opened so many moving trucks and found boxes falling over. I'm going to try that when I get done stacking here. However far out I come with boxes, I'm going to tie a string across or put a piece of tape across to try to keep those boxes from tipping and falling. There's some damage here I didn't see before. Man, it's hard to check stuff when you check it out. So anyway, let me get up there and get some more boxes. I'm rolling down. I got four, five, six, seven, eight boxes at a time with these two dollies. Came out here to clean my patio and I totally forgot that I have someone's complete dash and rear seat set up for their 850. They were supposed to come pick this up a year and a half, two years ago, but it is still here. Man, I hate to throw this stuff out, but I don't know what else to do with it. I sent the guy a message, gave him a call. He's six hours away. He can make it here before I check out if he really wants it. Good morning, party people. Man, I'm struggling. Moving is a lot of work, man. There's a video series out there called The Minimalist. Until you live in the property that you plan to die in, you need to watch those videos, man. I know some of you guys know what I'm talking about because I know you've, a couple of you have had to move. One of the tough things about moving is your job, but hey, you've been around as long as me and Diane has, and acquired a lot of the stuff, man, just don't get attached to stuff you don't need. Long time ago, when Elizabeth was five, seven, eight years old, we had a rule in the house. If you see something that you haven't used, in a year, you get rid of it. And man, it, it was a lot easier. I think it was a lot easier. But now, oh my gosh. I've seen stuff that been in a box for five years. Don't need that, man. It's probably got value to somebody, but it really don't have no value to you. So, get off this bumpy road. Still in Albuquerque, this is one of these places that they pave roads and they don't pave them again for a hundred years. And uh, one that I was climbing close to the airport, when they paved it, it settled and it's got cracks in the road. You get this drum beat. Anyway, Man, this moving is tough. I got four areas in our place that are, I want to say 95% done. None of it's 100% done. So my goal when I get back here in a few minutes is to get a couple of these areas quickly to 100% done, hopefully within an hour and a half. I'll have these areas 100% done. Then I'll have 
my spare bedroom storage area which I store a lot of things in got to go through that man a lot of stuff's gonna get thrown out I'm not I'm not taking all that stuff to Cincinnati I'm just not and I'm not getting the storage for it so they're gonna be a lot of parts a lot of stuff in the trash just the way it is Diane She's overwhelmed with this stuff. She's at the hotel, so I'm, I'm digging in this stuff by myself. Now, the nice thing is, thank God, I didn't have to scrounge for boxes. Dug in my savings a little bit. Bought boxes that are same size, uniform boxes. And this allows me to stack things in the truck a lot tighter. This, this truck's going to be tight. Tight. Now yesterday, I somehow thought, maybe not yesterday, today is Sunday, yesterday was Saturday, Friday. Friday, I somehow thought that I was going to be out of here Saturday by noon. I was supposed to spend a little bit of time with my aunt last night and be with her today. Man... By 3 o'clock, I felt like I was halfway done. So about that time, I took Diane to a hotel. And, man, it's just, I chiseled away at it as long as I could yesterday. Got pretty far. But, like I said, I still got some stuff I need to get. I, I'm starting to wonder if I'm going to be out of here today by noon. It's... 6.34 right now, I thought I'd be out here by 6 o'clock, but I was exhausted last night. Moving a little slow this morning. Went and got me some coffee. I'm going to sit here, have my coffee, answer a few messages, and then I'm going to get at it. Hopefully 6.45 I'll be at it, and uh, we'll see where I'm at at 8 o'clock. If at 8 o'clock, I only got that one room to get done, maybe I'll be out of here at noon today drive as far as I can and stay the night somewhere and then finish driving to Cincinnati tomorrow. So that's where I'm at. Man, if you plan on moving, there's two ways to do it. This mad way that I'm doing it. I, I really didn't spend the last two months preparing for this move. I, I just really uh, get at it this, this last week. And man, it, it's not enough to move all this stuff out of state. You know, moving across town, you can make a bunch of little runs. Moving from downstairs to upstairs, you could fit around with that two, three days. But packing stuff up to move it out of state or somewhere else, man, it's, it's a big job. So anyway, I am trying to answer messages when I take my little breaks. I'm taking maybe 10, 15 minutes every couple hours. And... But I, I'm not able to go and do any tinkering and, and be concentrated on that stuff. Not right now. So I hope we'll be back at it in a few days. But uh, right now, I'm loading up that truck, man. That truck is getting smaller by the hour. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, oh, I still get people looking for this video I made some time ago. They got a cassette tape adapter modification that people do so they could plug little cords headphone uh, 3.5 millimeter cords into uh, their phone or their mp3 player or whatever and then that's wired they the, the video and the, and the write-ups show you how to wire that into your cassette player in your car man don't do that I did that a few years back and I started having problems when my phone would briefly pause between uh, songs. It would make the radio think that the signal was lost. And then I would hear a little click. It kind of powering down. And then a second or two later, the MP3 player or the phone would start playing the next song. And then it would activate my stereo and pow! Man, I, it was a loud pop. I think it was potentially damaging speakers if you had the volume up loud enough. 
So I got to where when the song was going off, I would turn the stereo down so it could go through that popping and then turn it back up. That's just a hassle. So I quit using it. I quit doing the mod. I don't know if the new devices will do that to it or not. However, so I, I, I locked up the video. I had somebody contact me the other day, asked me to unlock it. But I started using cassette adapters. I would go through one every one a month, one every other month. They're cheap, five bucks at Walmart, whatever. And then I would try to find better ones for 10, 15 bucks. But I ran across this little adapter here. It's Case Logic. It's a cassette Bluetooth adapter that allows you to Bluetooth your phone to this adapter. You turn the power on, it's got a little button there, and it's got a little light down here. You squeeze the little button, the little lights come on. It's flashing, letting you know it's ready to be synchronized. I don't know what you call it, connected to your device. And when it loses connection to your device, say it, you get out of the car, you walk away, you break the Bluetooth range, it starts doing this again, letting you know that it's not connected to the Bluetooth device. And you can see that when it's in the cassette player. That thing will shut itself down after a few minutes. I don't know how long it is. We can sit here and watch it. Anyway, so you can Bluetooth your phone. Whatever you do on your phone, you could hear it through your car stereo if you got a cassette player working. Much better, in my opinion, than having that wire wired in your stereo. I know it cost me maybe $18, $19. I got mine at Walmart. They probably got good ones or better ones somewhere else. The thing lasts, when it's fully charged, about nine hours. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. I'm not sure why, but a good solid nine hours. And when it is about to die, it'll start beeping or clicking in your system to let you know it's about to die. You glance down at it and you see it's flashing a red light on it to let you know it's about to die and it's going to die within two or three minutes. You put it on the charger. In my cigarette lighter adapter charger Bluetooth thing, it charges up. I think it's 2.5 amps or something it's putting out. It charges up in about, uh, I think I've seen it charge up as quick as 35 minutes, uh, maybe 38 minutes, I think it's fully charged, you know. So, charges up pretty quick, lasts a long time, much better uh, thing to use than wiring in that MP3 blue cable into soldering into your cassette deck. And then you could take it to other devices. I've had this thing at least six months. I meant to do a review on it. It's been great. No complaints at all. Sound quality is decent. As good or better than a radio. It's just the way to go. So That's my take on that. Let me have my coffee and get to work. Thanks for watching. 722 and I am pretty much done with the patio. Just got finished sweeping it. Now the things on here I'm going to try to load in the vehicle. I'm going to go discard of these two gas cans and this weathered box. But, get all the rest of the car parts off of there. I'm going to discard that little crate there. And I can set things here to get ready to be loaded. Oh yeah. See this little plastic stuff here? I get this from the garden center. Uh, people put it in their gardens to try to stop weeds from coming up through there. These apartments, they don't want you to have all kind of things on your patio, like down there. One of my neighbors has a motorcycle, you know, so if they could see those things from the street and outside, they'll probably harass you about it and make you get it. So I put this stuff up. It reduces people's ability to see what's on the patio so it doesn't look bad. Also prevents people from wanting to get on there and steal stuff if the patio's on the first level. So that's what I do. Just a tip to try to get along with your neighbors, stay within the guidelines of your apartment complex. 
Now I'm going to hit this bedroom, finish that off, and it's 722, so this took less than a half hour to finish this up. Now it's time to finish up packing this room. I guess this room is 90% done. That's probably 95 if you've seen what we had in this room. So I'm going to locate this stuff to where it needs to be to get loaded on the truck, finish loading this box, take down my TV antenna, pack up my TV, I'm going to look for a TV box, and roll that microwave stand down to the donation area. So let's get cracking. When moving, I advise you to tape the remote to the back of the TV. Reduces chances of getting lost. As you can see, these boxes stack pretty good, four high. I put notes on the box. I put a sticker on there, bedroom. I'm going to put the same sticker above the doorway of the destination. So if somebody happens to be helping us unload the vehicle, the truck, they'll know right where that box goes without asking. Got this bedroom done. However, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum it. It seems like the thing to do, even though they're probably going to replace this carpet because it's got a couple of wear marks in it. And these places nowadays, they replace everything. I got a hole I put in the wall there to take my antenna into the living room. I think I'm going to get a switch plate cover and just cover that up. Uh, 15 cent versus they may charge $5 to fix that. I don't know. But if I got time. Anyway, I got most of it picked up. I got a brand new vacuum cleaner that we've never even taken out of the box. We were using a different vacuum cleaner. And I got this one. So, let me go ahead and get this fired up. Looks like it's taken apart. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and use this vacuum cleaner. Just so it could have a video. I've taken everything out of the box, so I'm going to put it together. So, it can be used for the first time. Of course, this is going to be a pretty simple process. They don't want you to be stuck without using your vacuum cleaner. It should be quick and easy. First thing you want to do is get this long piece here and attach it to this. Let me go ahead and snap that on there. You have the handle pointing that way. Slide it right down like that and push it down to you hear a click. Oh, it kind of snapped in place. Now it's got a couple of screw holes. One screw the hole there, one screw hole there. It says put the two screws in there. Mine, the two screws were taped to the handle. Cross tip screws. Let me go ahead and get those installed. Might have to get you a pair of scissors to cut that off. You could use a flat tip or a cross tip. Screw those right down in there. This is plastic, so don't screw it tight. Just screw it till it's snug. Do, 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 do. If you screw it too tight, you'll strip the plastic out of it. If you got an electric screwdriver, be careful. You don't drive it down too far. Let me do this with two hands. Next, you want to get this little funny looking piece right here. They call it a wand base. You put it in here like that and you turn it counterclockwise. Lock it in place. It's got a little arrow there showing you how to get it in. You get the flexible hose and you line it up. Got a little nub up top there. Line that in like that. And you twist it just a little bit clockwise to lock it in place. Now you take this hose, you loop it up into this top handle clip here, then you stretch it down and press it onto the bottom like that. Now you can put the slack any way you want, I don't think it matters. Do 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 do, as long as it's locked in like that. Now this has a Febreze filter, if you want to put that filter in, you turn the vacuum cleaner around, push this button how you do if you want to empty it. Then you pull for the filter 
lift that up. Then you take this out of the package. Oh, there's one already in there. I guess you would replace this one with that one. So you set the filter up in here. Put that back down. Set this back in here like this. You'll hear it click when you push it in place. And that's that. Next thing you could do is put your accessories on the unit so that they don't get lost. To store this crevice tool, I would put it down in there like that and then store this like that. Now your crevice tool was stored, your dust broom is stored, your power bristle stored, everything stored the way it needs to be. You just pull the cord out and plug it in. This little plastic thing just comes off, pull that out, plug it in. That's the power button there. It's got a release here so that you can lock it, let it roll down. And you got to change the depth of your carpet there. To wound your cord in after you pull it out, you push this button there. And that wounds the cord in. To use your attachments, you just unplug this and plug your attachments into that. After the first use, I would consider this vacuum cleaner good. Now the last one I had, I think it was a Kenmore, and it had a little light on it that indicated that you were still pulling dirt up, and you knew the carpet was clean when the light quit coming on. However, this room, I don't think it's been vacuumed before, maybe, but I didn't think it was dirty, it was mostly covered. And man, look at all the dirt we got up out of this carpet just now. Now we're in the desert, which is a dirty place. But I had no idea that this much dirt was in this carpet. So I'm going to go ahead and dump that out. I got another room back here. As you can see, I've been using for storage. The carpet is mostly covered in it. So after I get all this stuff out here in a few minutes... We're going to vacuum it and see what we get out of it. It is 919 and I'm done with the second room. So I'm done with the patio. Just got to load stuff into the vehicles. I'm done with this bedroom. I'm done with that bathroom. Now I need to hit my storage room back there. Not sure how long that's going to take, but a lot of that stuff's going to end up in the dumpster, unfortunately. So I'm rolling right along. Got this room cleaned and vacuumed. And what do we have here? Dr. J came to visit me before I escaped Albuquerque. Brought his S90 T6. Let me take it for a cruise. Man, let me tell you something. This four-cylinder S90, man, it feels every bit as good as your 2.3s. Look at those mirrors unfold. Look at that grill from the P1800 back in the day. A little bit of refinement. I'm sorry about this wind, but this thing is nice. Took it for a drive. It parked itself. Nice screen in there. It does Apple or Android apps. Has its own Wi-Fi account vents itself and I pulled up next to that car and it told me it was ready to park drop that thing in reverse and it parked itself look how close man I can't get that close beautiful beautiful let's take a quick look at the dash man when I quit wrenching man I might even get me one of these put your foot on the brake got the key in the car Turn this thing here to start. Fires right up. That thing is on and popping. I don't know how to turn the volume down, so I don't know what to tell you guys there. But over here, you got your speedometer stuff. Over here, you got your tack. Tells you if you're in park or whatnot. And uh, it's got lane assist. It's got auto drive. It is nice. Nice pewter finish there. 
drove good. Even over harsh bumps that make me cringe and panther, this thing handled that good. Impressed, guys. So, whenever I retire, I'll probably get me one of these S90s. Woo, woo. Rolling in the Penske. Time to load up some boxes. I hadn't seen anybody parked over there all day. And now, somebody's sitting there with their flashes on. They need to come move that. I need to load some stuff in this truck. So I'm going to give you a glimpse of the truck now. And what I got in the apartment. And then, I'm going to go get some stuff to load up. They need to move this vehicle. Mm -mm. I don't even know if I'm out of the way enough for somebody to get by. Yeah, they got plenty of room. I'm going to shut it down, go bring a load, and then move it back up. So this is where I'm at with the apartment right now. We got all this stuff here. A little bit of stuff here. Queen bee stuff there, baby. Things in here. We still got a whole apartment full of stuff and no furniture. This stuff out here. We're gonna come back here. A couple things here. Remember I cleared this room out earlier. Excuse me. And then this stuff here. These cabinets are gonna be a problem. But let me go ahead and load what I can in the truck. Then come back and start dealing with this stuff again. Uh, I doubt I'm going to get done tonight. And that's going to push me into another day. I don't know what that's going to do with my truck rental. I may end up having that thing an extra day or two. Hopefully not. So I got three medium boxes here. Two large boxes there. And three small boxes there. I'm going to take all this down at one time. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes at a time. I'm able to push this just like this. Man, I thank God my mother-in-law had these dollies. This is where we are with the truck right now. Got the sofa here, part of the bed here. I just set these boxes here. So the truck's about half full, really. Maybe not even that, but let's go ahead and get this stuff on here. Well, I think I'm going to wrap up here for Sunday. I'm about a third of the way up with boxes. I don't think it's a half. About a third of the way. I got a bunch of stuff still in the house. I'm hungry. I might come back, pack up a little more, might not. See how it feels after I eat. So... This is where I'm at Sunday night. If I do not leave by noon tomorrow, I'm going to have this truck another day. And I have no idea what that's going to cost me. So hopefully, I can get out of here by noon tomorrow. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.